This is Sandy Minkle, and I am with John and Becky Thomas. John and Becky, welcome. Thank you Thanks. for having us. Yeah. Tell us where you are from. We're from Arlington, Tennessee, just outside of Memphis, uh, which is the southwest corner of Tennessee. Okay. And uh, mm -hmm. we're on this little uh, piece of land here uh, we call Peach's Place. And uh, lots of uh, forest trees and animals and well, forest animals, not livestock. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so what do you do? Well, uh, by day I'm a software developer, and by night I'm a solo piano composer and re recording artist. Uh, several albums out. I uh, just I just love playing the piano, um, composing music. Becky, what do you do? Well, um, I am uh, well. I guess before children, I was a full time teacher, taught elementary. Um, and then became a stay-at-home mom, stayed home with the kids, then went and just started teaching preschool to kind of ease my way back into the school system, um, then started a, a business uh, for hand, custom hand-painted signs called Love My Town, which is super fun. Um, so now between painting and um, I'm also now subbing in the elementary schools now here in town, um, and then started making furniture. So a little busy, but having fun. <laughs> Well, I can't believe I am asking you to this, but I just have to ask, how did you discover Luke Penn? Well, uh, we have been lifetime friends with Matt and Tony Daniels. So we've been following them for a long time, supporting them and um, just watching them interact with uh, Luke 10 and how that's all evolved with Tony, especially. And, and then of course, through friendship with you, uh, kind of went full circle mm -hmm. on, on the whole thing about uh, listening to Jesus. And uh, the more that that became um, a reality, uh, the more attractive Luke 10 uh, looked to me. So uh, I was like, I want to, I want to go deeper with this. I want to see where this leads. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got connected with Luke 10. And then he, he, he pulled me in. So oh, he pulled you I, in. I heard it, heard it from him. Oh, you heard it from him. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So that's the guy right there. That's the guy right there. <laughs> so you recently finished uh, Church 101. How was that for you? It was really good. It really was. Um, I'll have to say, um, we, we just moved into our house, and so it, things were a bit overwhelming, uh, just trying to get settled in the house, and so it was really hard to take some time to sit down and do it and you know you're at the end ours was at the end of the day um and we we're just so tired we just didn't want to do anything <laughs> but we pushed ourselves to go and we were so grateful that we did because uh, the relationships that we built um were good strong relationships it was amazing to watch how complete strangers can grow so close so quickly just by um, listening to each other, encouraging each other, praying together, listening to Jesus together. Um, it, it was quite amazing. Mm -hmm. What was it like for you, Becky? Um, what really surprised me was just this uh, sense of community um, that we established in our little group. Um, I was like, wow, here we are mi miles apart, yet we have this kind of closeness and bond with complete strangers, but what bonds us is the, you know, is the love of Jesus and, you know, in our heart for, for him. And, uh, and that was just so neat and it was refreshing, um, you know, getting to meet weekly with this group of people. What were, what was one takeaway that you had from it? Well, for me, it was, um, it was the validation that I wasn't crazy for, um, listening to Jesus. I, I wasn't, you know, I grew up and we didn't, in, a, in the church, we were never taught that. We were actually taught the opposite, um, that God doesn't speak to us today other than through the scriptures. And so um, it was really neat to be in, in an environment where we were all actively participating in that exercise of listening and we were hearing the same things. And that was 
that was very um, strengthening for my faith. Um, and and it, it validated that I'm on the right track and that um, I can listen to that voice and I can uh, read scriptures and, and, it, and it all is part of walking in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Becky, what was one of your takeaways? Um, well, again, it's, it's back to that, uh, that sense of community, um, that I just, I thoroughly enjoy it and thrive for, um, just the people with their, their heart of, um, being so real and transparent, um, just the desire to, you know, want that more and think, how can I, you know, what's my next steps? How can I, you know, continue to create this sense of with people either, around, you know, physically who's in my area, or if not that, you know, on uh, social media or, you know, through Zoom calls or whatever. Um, just wanting to give a, a safe place, I guess, uh, for, for people, because you get excited when you hear good news and um, you just want to share it with everybody. So that's kind of my takeaway of, okay, where, what am I going to do with this? And, you know, who can I, um, who can I encourage through it? So. Yeah. Yeah. So that was actually my, that was, was great because that was my next question. Where, oh, where wow. do you go from here for you? Yeah. So John, where does, where, where do you go from here with this? Well, the first thing is um, starting to implement those things in our family, um, at those, those rhythms. So we, uh, at, at, at the dinner table, we do listen to each other as far as, you know, checking in, how, how are you feeling, what's going on in your life and everybody gets a turn. And we joke a lot about it because some of them think it's corny, but, but, but I think that deep down they do appreciate being heard, um, that we care about what their thoughts are and what their feelings are. Um, and, and then gradually introducing more scripture reading and then eventually listening mm -hmm. together. Um, definitely something that we, we want to do in our family. Um, and, then, and then personally, I'd like to go on to do Leader One-on-One. Um, which I know is a it's a bigger commitment, more long long term commitment. But I feel like um, what I experienced in church one on one, I want to continue, and I want to um, develop those skills so that I'm equipped to help others experience the joy that comes from this um, the, these rhythms. Right. So I have one more question. Um, you when you went through Church 101, you knew that your, your facilitator was in training. And I'm just wondering, what was that like for you? Well, we would not have known that he was in training unless he had said he was, because he was very professional and um, equipped to, to do it, very, uh, listening, asking good questions, um, good feedback, uh, keeping a good pace, and uh, keeping us on track. On track, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I would not have known that he was he was training had he not said something yeah. becky what was that like yeah. for you um well uh yeah it was i had no idea until he said hey you know i'm, I'm new at this and we're like really you are you know um because he did he knew exactly uh how to lead how to guide um again keeping us on track and keeping us you know time conscious um you know and uh it was it was a fun experience it really was um and i thought he did quite well that's awesome well, i'm super super excited about this thank you so much for your time and for meeting with me today this is another another gem in the treasure chest well thank but, you so yeah, much thanks for having us, for having us.